everyone welcome back to vmd this video is gonna go over the ite in training exam so let's get started so what is the ite the ite is created by the american college of physicians or the acp and it's essentially a web-based exam that's about eight-ish hours that helps residents assess their progress throughout their stages of residency as a pga one two three so you take it every single year ite has essentially three main goals for residents to kind of have their own assessment, how they're doing over the years. It's also an assessment of your program director to know which residents need more help per se. Um, maybe some people need more dedicated study time. And it's supposed to help you prepare for the boards. Because when do we write the IT? So the ITs are written at the same time every single year across the board, so across the US for all IM grants, which essentially is between mid-August to beginning of September. So usually within those three to four weeks that all programs across the US have to get all their residents to write it. So my program is fairly huge, probably one of the biggest in New York City. We have a schedule where our residents, our chief residents tell us kind of the month before, like, hey, ITs are gonna come out. This is gonna be the location where you write it. This is your day. We are an X plus Y schedule, so we usually write ours during clinic block because that helps us save time. We're not kind of like running around on the floors or the ICU to write it. You have that designated time. Break down the IT, so it's essentially a nine hour exam and there are six blocks of about 50 questions each. So to roughly 300 questions for the whole day. This is going to be the breakdown and every single block is essentially 70 minutes. So you have 70 minute blocks and 10 minute breaks in between. Additionally, on top of that, unlike your USMLE examinations that you know, you have a certain amount of break and then you get to decide how long that break time is. This is already set up as a 10 minute break for you. So after block one, so after tutorial, you have block one and then you automatically have a 10 minute break. Then you have block two and then a 10 minute break, break, <laughs> block three. Halfway through the exam, you have a optional hour for lunch break, which I Personally, my test taking skills, I need that hour break. I need to rejuvenate myself. I need to hit the bathroom. I need to get a ton of coffee in my system. So I personally recommend taking it, but everyone has their own way of how they do it. And some people just kind of skip through the first break and they do the first two blocks back to back because they got mad energy in the morning. Some people take every 10 minute break. You don't have to use the full 60 minutes. You can, let's say, use the 45 minutes. Whenever you come back and you hit start or end, you hit end break and then you start the exam, you don't get that break time added to other breaks. It doesn't work like that. So either you use that full 60 minutes or whatever you end up using and you don't use that doesn't roll over to the other breaks. So after your 60 minute optional lunch break, you have block four, another 70 minutes, 10 minute break, block five, 10 minute break. Block six is your final block. After that, you have a survey from the ACP, which just covers some very basic questions like, um, are you categorical or primary care? Um, what do you want to do with your future? Are you burnt out, etc. questions. So do you register for the IT? Essentially, no. Um, majority of ACGME accredited programs will already register all their residents for the ITE. You don't really have to register per se when you get there on exam day um, how it works in my program is your chief resident gives you your login which is usually like a five digit number to get into the exam which is uh tagged to you and your information so that way when the results come out you know that's your results if your program does not self-register its residents, um, then you essentially will register on the ACP website. And I'm looking at the website right now. There's a lovely sheet that's on the main page called um, IMITE information sheet. And if you open it up, it kind of gives you the registration freeze, which regular registration, which usually goes from May to July, what I'm seeing, and it's $130. Late registration anytime after July, it looks like it's an additional $30 per register. So again, I don't really think this is for majority of ACGME accredited programs because this is um, one of the mandatory things that those IM programs have to do for their residents. You usually don't pay or, you know, somehow it's worked around from the administrative side. So. Usually a lot of people don't have to worry about this part. Also, that's another really important thing. Don't forget to ask your chief examinee, your chief residents and your leadership before the IT, like what is the workspace environment gonna be? Obviously people that kind of went through COVID at the time, we've done these virtually, but I feel like a lot of the programs are now transitioning back to in-person. 
So make sure you ask, is it gonna be freezing? What's the temperature gonna be like? What am I allowed to bring? All that stuff. Where am I gonna put my food? Special assistance slash accommodations. Yes, there are certain guidelines that the ACP says. Um, if you have some sort of a disability, the program is responsible to make those special accommodations for you to be able to write the exam. Scoring, let's talk a little bit about scoring. So how is the ITE score? It's a weighted exam, so you're compared how good you do or your percentage score is basically weighted against how everybody in your PGY year does across the board nationally. So I just wrote my ITs this week on PGY3 in my program, which means that my score is gonna be based on how all the PGY3s did across USA, every single IM program, that's what my score is gonna be based on. So if I hit average, that means I am pretty much right where majority of the residents in my year are. And essentially, how is this helping you prep for boards? It's helping yourself understand where, what areas am I kind of lacking in? So when you get your results for the ITs, and again, this could vary depending on the programs, but how we get our IT scores, it'll have your final score on the top, it's right ACP, and it's gonna have a breakdown of how well you did on each subspecialty. So cardio, X percentage, rheumatology, X percentage, GI, X percentage. Um, it's kind of kind of break it down for you that way. So this helps you as a future board examinee understand, okay, what subjects am I lacking? So what is going to be more content that I have to cover before my board exam and things like that. Also, once you keep your PGY 1, 2, and 3 IT exam, you can see how well you've been progressing and, you know, if certain subspecialty needs more work. So ACP says on their website, out of the 300 practice exams, about 260 of them are scored and 40 of them are unscored. There is no penalty for the wrong answer. I would suggest answering all the questions. That's why it's kind of good to, again, if you're studying for step three, take this as a assessment of how you are utilizing your 70 minutes for those 50 questions. After the exam, um, usually ACP says it takes about five weeks for your programs to get the results how long it takes for the program to give you your results. Obviously that'll vary based on different programs, but it will have that sheet. Um, some programs give it digitally, Our, my program gives it in paper, um, which gives you your assessment, kind of where you, what's your overall percentage and how that compares to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, because it's a standard weighted exam, like the SATs, MCAT, and the USMLEs, it's gonna be compared to how everybody else in the US did in your cohort, so your PGY year. How did I prepare? So it took me only two PGY years to learn how to really prep for the ITE. Because ACP is in like makes mix up, I essentially believe my favorite resource for ITE has been mix up. If you're gonna study through mix up and you're only really studying for the test taking skills purposes, I would do time blocks like how you would practice the assembly. If you're studying for the ITE as actual content, then of course mix up board basics or even their actual like longer textbook, um, which is all included in their online package. Those would be great resources for you to use. I will say though, as just a word of advice, a lot of the times, and I've given this advice to a couple of interns, um, you don't essentially really have to study the first year. And I only said that because let this be a cold kind of assessment of where you are. If you wish to study, by all means, my biggest recommendation is take the ITE as a example or as a prep per se to study for your step three. So I scheduled my step three in intern year in November. We did our ITs in August. I did not really study for the ITE per se, but I'd already kind of been studying for step three. So I allowed that study time for step three help me prepare also for ITs. That being said, word of caution, the content on the ITE is written by ACP is not going to be the content for step three. When I say let it use it as a tool to help you prepare for step three, I am talking more about test taking strategies, time management, stamina, and perseverance throughout an exam. For already, if you have gotten to this part and you're watching this video, it means you've written step one and step two of USMLEs. So you kind of already know the flow, your own flow of test taking on exam day. So let the ITE be a sort of aid in making sure that you're up to your stamina. You can with you can like keep your mind active for eight hours to figure out what you're gonna eat, how you're gonna sleep, your morning ritual, all that cool stuff that people do before exam. So 
that's what I mean when I say let IT be kind of like a helper towards step three studying because remember content is not going to be the same content for the IT is mostly is it's not mostly it's pretty much helping you prepare for boards and in my opinion in my three years I've written IDs it's been based on mix up per se um, some people say it's also mix up in you world, but essentially those are also the two biggest resources to kind of study for your boards. And I will follow up later on this year on board prep studying as I kind of go through it. Also, just a quick heads up, even ACP says that you're not truly supposed to study for this exam because it's supposed to be an assessment of where you are. If you're learning on the wards, you know, you're taking time to teach yourself during clinic blocks, you're studying your patients and all the the stuff that's supposed to help you learn as a resident on the daily should be prepped for you for doing the IT, for doing good on the IT anyway. Also on the ACP website is the Practice ITE. It opens up on your web browser and you can kind of go through it and pretend to have a quick practice exam. We, My proctors and my exam have been the chief resident, so we, if I've ever had any questions during the exam or if there was any issue with the software, you know, our chiefs are kind of the ones that help us assess that. So make sure if you're, it's your first time writing the ITE, if you're an intern, ask who's gonna be there. All right, everyone, I hope this video on ITEs, the gist and the basics really helped. Um, I've also added, obviously, sprinkled my snippets and my experiences in there, as well as what resources I use. So good luck on the ITEs, everyone.